las llaman las malas tierras. Son poco fértiles y son el territorio de tres tribus sioux de Dakota del Norte que después del descubrimiento de una enorme reserva de petróleo de esquisto en 2008, se hicieron millonarias. Epicentro del milagro petrolero, la reserva india de Fort Berhol es una zona moribunda 15 años después de las primeras perforaciones. Jeff White es agente de seguridad de la policía de MHA. Uh, back in 2014, we created um, MHA Drug Enforcement, kind of a standalone law enforcement agency within the tribe to uh, to just concentrate on uh, combating drugs. La MHA, o la nación Mandan, Hidatsa y Arikara, que son las tres tribus de la reserva, es la propietaria de estas tierras y agoniza tras el boom petrolero. Firearms in the United States falls under the Second Amendment, which allows all its citizens to uh, own firearms. So he's legal. The boom is over, but the, uh, the wells are still producing. So, and people are still getting uh, oil royalties. And, you know, sad to say, some of that gets used on, on the drugs. If you look at the reservation population-wise, it looks like it's a, a huge, huge thing. For us, it is, um, but statewide too. Esto es Newtown, una de las ciudades más importantes de la reserva, con una sola calle principal llena de camionetas y de aburrimiento. Los trabajadores del petróleo abandonan sus caravanas para irse a trabajar a otros sitios. Las casas en ruinas de la comunidad india que se hizo millonaria nos intrigan. She wants a fried bread burger. Cheeseburger, hamburger. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. With onion and mustard. Cheeseburger. Brandy Canyon trabaja en TDH, el único restaurante de comida rápida de la ciudad. Three dollars is your change, and we'll be right out here. Para Brandy, nativa de la reserva, la venganza de los Sioux por el petróleo tiene un sabor amargo. A lot of people think that people from our tribe here have land and oil no it's less than 13% versus you know 13% of 17,000 is what less than 2,000 so less than 2,000 people get major oil royalties versus the majority of us out here that don't have land or minerals all of us enrolled members we are all collectively owners of the tribal land but how and that is said and spent and whatnot, we don't really get as much say, which would be nice, especially on major purchases our tribe makes. La MHA, gestora de la reserva y de los dividendos del oro negro, recibe 25 millones de dólares al mes de ingresos provenientes del petróleo y se encarga de su inversión.
Al igual que los hidrocarburos, de la Tierra brotan museos con su efigie y edificios administrativos tan vacíos como inútiles. Come on, show me around. I haven't been in it for five months, four months, four months. Yeah, nice and warm in here. Mark Fox, que sonríe satisfecho, fue elegido presidente por la comunidad y no podía resistirse a visitar su futuro, gigante e innovador invernadero. Can't wait for my strawberries and the green peppers. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be so amazing. We've taken our energy, revenue, and resources and using them to spin off another business, right? Agriculture, bring it back. So we're pretty excited about it all, you know, millions of pounds of, of food, and, and that's going to be produced all year long. Para poder dar luz a este proyecto, el jefe de los Sioux se convierte en ingeniero agrónomo y cuenta con mucho orgullo que este inmenso huerto se calentará con el gas que expulsan las chimeneas. For, for thousands of years, we had corn, beans, squash, watermelon, and we grew them massively. So over time, we became dependent on, you know, commodities and, and modernized food. But now, the objective is not only to bring that back, to eat healthy here, grow our food all year long, but to become a leading exporter of agriculture in the United States and the world. And, and I'll be honest with you, it isn't just us or myself and we here at MHA Nation that are excited about the project. There's a lot of other people excited about it in the state, the governor, everybody else. Everybody's watching. El coste del invernadero es de 26 millones de dólares. Pero no hay ningún proyecto a la vista para construir un hospital. Benjamin Goodberg y su amiga Kelly Hossi, al igual que el resto de indios de Newtown, deben hacer tres horas de viaje para ir a un centro de salud. Se paran delante de las inversiones de la MHA y su presidente frente a un mar de incomprensión. It cost $1.9 million. I don't even think this went out last year. I think it did for like oh. three times. Every time they pull it off the water, it costs a couple thousand, uh, maybe more than that. There's our yacht. There she is, island girl. <risa> Las voces se levantan ante los suntuosos gastos que realiza el Consejo Tribal, que se encuentran muy lejos de las preocupaciones del día a día de sus miembros honorarios. Los responsables de la MHA quieren recuperar el empleo y sueñan con atraer el turismo. Así que, ¿por qué no tener un yate a las puertas del casino y del río que se hiela durante seis meses al año? It, it's a loss of money, I think, or it's a loss. It's not, uh, it's not worth it. They never use it. They had to build a special dock. But I was like, that's still our money, you know, trying yeah. to tell the people that's still the tribe's money. Lo más impactante es este lago artificial, que se ha comido gran parte de la historia de los indios de este lugar y que la dirección tribal espera transformar en una zona de ocio. The name of it is Lake Sakakawea. And it, it originally was the bottomlands and the home of the, the Mandan Hadatsa Rikura people. We lived here uh, on this, where the, underneath where the lake is, and so our homes were here. So uh, all of our different little bands and societies and uh, clans, we all lived here. And, uh, What year was that, that they flooded this? Uh, it was like in the 40s, maybe. 1940? Yeah, maybe, you know, uh, they just uh, built a dam way down there called, uh, on the other side, yeah. They start building it and they just start letting the water come in slowly. 
En 1947, el gobierno federal estadounidense obligó a las tribus a que cediesen sus terrenos para poder construir la presa de Garrison. Los realojaron a un lado y al otro del río, en la llamada Newtown. Una herida todavía abierta para muchos, que ven cómo su propio clan apuesta por un proyecto turístico en sus tierras sagradas. el rencor de la comunidad india se palpa en la llamada Arabia Saudí del norte de Estados Unidos, delante de las máquinas tragaperras del casino de Newtown, propiedad de la MHA. I get upset because uh, we gave up a lot. Our people gave up a lot when they moved us out of the bottom because of the dam they had to build over here. We gave up 159,000 acres of land. And that's a lot. We were separated. People live across. We're scattered. Our families don't get to see each other like we should. When they put the casino here, it was kind of a good thing because it drew people to work. Plus, a lot of people like the idea, you know, that they get to see others. It's kind of a thing for people to come to in a way, I mean, to like to get out of the house, for instance. Joan Matthews lleva toda su vida en la reserva. Pero más que enseñarnos la casa donde vive desde que sumergieron su asentamiento, quiere enseñarnos a sus ruidosos vecinos. The first thing you say, oh my gosh, they're drilling over there next. And because, for the simple reason, you can hear them at night and the ground sort of shakes a little bit. And even when you're lying in bed, you feel a tremble like, uh, you would say, what are they doing? You know, you hear it. <sighs> Sometimes you smell that. And it's not good. It's not good. Our reservation looks like a birthday cake at night, all lit up. Yeah. That's the way it is. Así es esto, se ha convertido en el mantra de los indios de la reserva de Fort Berhol. Sin embargo, este sentimiento de resignación debido a las consecuencias del boom petrolero no es solo propio del territorio Sioux. Los granjeros blancos que crían su ganado en sus tierras también lo sufren. Dos veces al año, muchos granjeros se reúnen en Dickinson para vender su ganado. Donald Nelson es uno de ellos. Every one of them are 100% home raised cattle running up the Donnie Nelson Ranch. I'll tell you what, and when he feeds them guys, he just feeds them just perfect. Donald es la tercera generación de ganaderos en su familia. Él y su mujer Rina, que poseen 400 cabezas de ganado, no viven de vender su ganado. Six and a half. 
we did better than we thought we were going to do. So, because the market's so up and down. She can buy a new pair of shoes. Yeah, but that's it. Buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Donald y Rina son propietarios de unos terrenos que cedieron a los petrodólares. Han alquilado varias parcelas a empresas petroleras y van a poner la renovación de su casa en manos de dos agricultores. No nos dicen nada de los ingresos que reciben. It's a conflicting deal. It comes with the good and the bad, you know. So the good part was we financially the state is beyond our dreams. In fact, they don't know how to handle it, I don't think. And of course, it made a lot of money for people. It brought jobs and younger people back in. We were kind of an older <laughs> society here. I was, I was considered a young farmer, and I was 40-some years old, you know, so. Boom part, I guess you'd say, is over. It's producing, but it's starting to decline. I don't like the way it's worded. I don't want to sit here like we have with some I can show you that are still here, never reclaimed, you know, and you don't get nothing for them. And you can't use the land. I don't want to see that. I think I'll take you back to one over there and we'll do it there. It was kind of the, it's on ours, so that's one good thing. If somebody comes, I don't have to worry. That's not our land, so. La extracción de gas y petróleo ha sido posible en las tierras de Donald y en las zonas más cercanas de la reserva de los Sioux gracias a la técnica del fracking. El fracking consiste en inyectar un líquido a alta presión en la roca y perforar los sustratos más densos. El petróleo que se extrae se mezcla con agua salada que lleva arsénico y sustancias tóxicas. Los desechos tóxicos que se almacenan en depósitos enormes son otra de las preocupaciones de Donald. Problem is, as I always say, it's a man and a machine. One of them is going to mess up sooner or later, and you have to do something with that salt water. It used to be they put it in pits, or they, you know, when you pipe it, you have pipeline leaks and and. So once you have that spill, and then once they're up, you have to deal with them too. Las empresas petroleras guardan silencio sobre lo sucedido y a regañadientes limpian las llanuras contaminadas y despobladas de Dakota del Norte. Se estima que la factura sería de unos dos millones de dólares. If you don't have the power to combat them, really, um, they have the best lawyers and they. They have the most money and they know how to drag it out, you know. The state should be liable is what we say because they have allowed it. It's a takings. Ironías de la vida, los granjeros blancos y los Sioux luchan codo a codo por lo mismo. Todos critican la gestión de las autoridades federales o tribales del dinero proveniente del petróleo. En Newtown, Kelly, Hossi y sus cinco hijos viven en una casa de tres habitaciones y les gustaría poder beneficiarse más de los cánones del oro negro, que ascienden a 300 millones al año. We get a thousand dollars three times a year from the royalties that we that from the oil revenue. I mean, just with just with the 94 million dollars that. Uh, land that they bought, just the one land, they could have did five more payments of $1,000 to their people. That's $8,000 a year even, you know? Because of those shoes, those are dumb. <laughs> la última decisión de los gestores ha sido vender cinco hectáreas de terreno a Las Vegas por 90 millones de dólares. Reelegido en 2022 para un tercer mandato, para Mark Fox, su presidente, que está más que satisfecho, la MHA está preparando el futuro de su clan. Eventually, the oil and gas will run out. Eventually, that will be gone. I have to strategize how to reinvest, make more baskets, more eggs and more baskets, right? But while it has value now, 
We're going to take that, we're going to utilize that, and we're going to build out and enhance our overall economic development and our sustainability as a nation. All these different things that we've created um, cost us a lot of money, but it was well spent. And yeah, we're criticized for not always having the numbers out there all the time. That's fine. Uh, most people that are busy with life and see with their own eyes what we've done say, amazing. If you watch it, el día en el que tuvo lugar esta entrevista, la SPJ, un consorcio de periodistas estadounidenses, le otorgó al presidente de la MHA el Black Hole Award, el premio del agujero negro, por su gestión opaca y peligrosa de los ingresos del petróleo. Un consuelo muy pequeño para la comunidad india de la reserva, que mantiene su enfado sin que los escuchen. It says the Society of Professional Journalism has given North Dakota three affiliated tribe Mark Fox its on an invitable black hole award. It's a Du Bois honor award annually to highlight the most heinous violations of public rights to known according to the New York Times. If we didn't have this oil and stuff, Mark wouldn't be in here. That means a man that don't have, he's thinking about himself and, and not even thinking about the people. My, that's his thinking, is thinking like a white man. He's thinking like a white man with no teachings from his, from our culture, from our ways. Chanu Pawan Necha Cada año se extraen 386.000 barriles de 1.300 pozos que siguen activos dentro de la reserva, un cuarto de la producción de petróleo de Estados Unidos. boys come on there this guy's name is chinksy in uh in the sioux language that's sun we never had all this traffic this traffic is just uh too much right now it's just cars going back and forth mostly trucks I know I can't do nothing about it, you know, and I just have to live with it. <laughs> you know, I can't. There's no way they're, they're ever going to move them out of there. So uh, we uh, ride around them, and we got our own trails back there once we hit the river. You see all the oil field and all the fences. It's, it makes you feel bad because how it was. Los Sioux de Dakota del Norte se niegan a que su reserva sea la primera refinería india de la historia de Estados Unidos. Sin embargo, todo apunta a que lo será. Según los expertos, el subsuelo contiene suficiente hidrocarburo como para que los pozos sigan activos durante los próximos 20 años.